When most people think of Breaking Bad, they think of how the show revolves around an ego-driven meth cook that started out as a chemistry teacher. And yeah, most people would be correct in believing that, but I would say that an essential element to the series is family. No pun intended. <laughs> From Hector Salamanca nearly drowning his nephew in a drink cooler just to prove a point, or the brotherly hate between Chuck and Jimmy McGill that ended with plenty of things left unsaid. Or let's not forget about the rocky rehab filled relationship between Jane and Donald Margolis that is just surrounded by trauma. And of course, there's everything that's wrong with the White family. But in my opinion, the most iconic of these families throughout the series would have to be the Salamancas, hands down. Because when you look at them, it's just a pack of unstable lunatics. Because you got Tuco, who was known to kill if he felt disrespected. And notice I said felt and not actually disrespected. Rest in peace, Notos. Then you have Leonel and Marco, who are basically Terminators. Look at this, you cannot tell me that you wouldn't be questioning everything that you knew if this happened to you. Hank just unloaded a clip on this man and not even a drop of blood came from it. You might as well just accept death at that point. Then you have Lalo, who is the best of both worlds between Tuco and the twins, but unlike his cousins, it's nearly impossible for him to lose his temper. And he is the only Salamanca that made Gus truly feel fear. See this face? That is genuine, I have pee in my pants fear right now. And leading this pack of psychopaths is the now wheelchair bound and previously mentioned Hector Salamanca, who can have anyone killed with just a tap of a bell. Oh, and there's Joaquin Salamanca, who, well, let's be honest, he was just there to be killed by Jesse because dude didn't even speak any lines. And admit it, I bet you thought this was Joaquin too. Admit it! And during the episode Salud and the episode Face Off, we see the Salamanca bloodline get completely wiped out in spectacular fashion. But, what if I were to tell you, there still may be a Salamanca out there, and not even they knew about him? What? And that is none other than young Brock Cantillo. And I know this may sound like a bit of a reach, but trust me, with the evidence that I gathered, I can prove that he is definitely a part of the Salamanca bloodline, and you'll never guess who the father is. So think of this as less of a what if, but more of a what could be in the Breaking Bad universe. Meaning something that's not explicitly stated in the series, but when you look at it from a different angle, you'll see that the truth's been in your face the entire time. And now that this super long intro is over, before we get started, if you could leave a like on this video to support the channel, I'd appreciate it. But now, without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so let's start off by looking at what we do know about Brock, and more importantly, his mom, Andrea, who I would say played a pretty significant role in his life, until, well... So according to the Breaking Bad wiki, Brock is 6 years old, and we know that the events of Better Call Saul takes place 6 years before Breaking Bad. So that gap is what I really want to focus on, because we know that Tuco went to prison for about a year for beating up Mike in season 2 of Better Call Saul. But if he's anything like Nacho, his second in command, he likely had his fair share of girlfriends who were all hooked on drugs. And maybe, just maybe, one of these girlfriends could have been a young woman named Andrea who he'd hook up with from time to time. Because we also know that Andrea has a bit of a drug problem seeing how she's going to the NA meetings. But before she was who we know in Breaking Bad, I would imagine that during the events of Better Call Saul, when she was with Tuco, I'm sure that relationship was toxic and abusive. But he was likely able to get her to do anything with the promise of meth. And with her being the junkie that she is, or was, she probably just stayed just for her next hit. And we have to remember that this is young Tuco who was able to have Saul talk him down from killing the skaters out in the desert. Meaning that he wasn't completely evil just yet. And with what we know about Tuco and old people, he was likely able to win over Andrea's mom and basically become part of the family and possibly even take young Tumas under his wing and introduce him to the street life. Which may have been the thing that made Andrea's mom turn against him seeing how he corrupted her son. But with Andrea still being hooked on meth, she would care more about getting her next hit than confronting Tuco about her brother. And when the time came for her to make a decision between Tuco and her family, she likely chose Tuco. So maybe for the first day or two, things were fine for the toxic couple with her being moved into his abuelita's house. But Andrea would learn very quickly that Tuco is a lot more dangerous and unpredictable than she realized, and she'd have no clue on what she got herself into. From knowing that Tuco robs and kills people, to even having more than one girlfriend, none of that would matter to Andrea and she would still remain by his side. Mainly because she couldn't leave if she wanted to. And where would she go? She abandoned her own family for this relationship and she would be too ashamed to go back. And plus, she gets plenty of drugs every day, and she doesn't want to give that up. So regardless of the abuse, the blatant disrespect, or the lack of time together, she stays with Tuco and continues to numb herself with meth. But what if after a couple months, the same day that Tuco was arrested for beating up Mike, she found out that she was pregnant, and that was the wake-up call that she needed to realize that this isn't the life that she wants for herself or her unborn child. 
and she decided that it was time for her to stop using and make a change. So after putting her pride to the side, she would go back to her mom's house and leave this lifestyle behind once and for all. But when telling her family about Tuco being arrested, the news would hit Tumas the hardest, and over time, he would grow distant from his family and spend more time in the streets and hanging with the gangsters. But for Andrea, the further along she gets in her pregnancy, she chooses never to reach out to the Salamancas in fear for her son that they might try to take him from her. So she chooses to raise him with the help of her mom and keep him a secret. And even when Tuco was released, it's like he just forgot about her and never even attempted to reach out. Likely because at this point, this is Breaking Bad Tuco, who cares more about money and meth than anything, especially an old girlfriend. And besides, at that point, they would be moving in completely different circles, and I doubt Tuco would ever be seen near a rehab center. But once Brock was born, she vowed never to use again, but she learns that it's not so easy to stay clean when she's not pregnant and she ended up relapsing. And what made it worse, and I'm just speculating here, but I would imagine that she would be getting high in the car with baby Brock in the back seat, and when she least expected it, the police catches her in the act. And she would be arrested with Brock nearly being taken away from her if not for her mom intervening. And not only did she get the custody of her grandchild, but also bailing out Andrea and forcing her to attend drug meetings. Then giving her an ultimatum that if she uses again, her mom would take Brock away and leave her to ruin her life all on her own. Because what Andrea's mom doesn't want is for her daughter to get mixed back up with Tuco again. And by her going out to get drugs, it would only be a matter of time before they run into each other again if she continued down that path. So after agreeing to attend the Narcotics Anonymous meetings, things start going well for the first few years. And after a while, even though she doesn't like going to these meetings and probably never will, she can't risk losing her son by going back to her old ways. And even when she hears word that Tuco was killed, she really doesn't feel anything for him. Not grief, nor happiness. Maybe slightly relieved because she doesn't have to always look over her shoulder when she's out in public, but what she does feel more than anything is that something's missing in her life. But as the years go on, she would just continue to stay to herself and ignore that feeling and just remain sober while taking care of her kid. And after a while, a sign of hope comes to her in the form of Jesse Pinkman to fill the void of the thing that she felt missing in her life. And well, the rest is history. So after hearing all the evidence in this case, you have to tell me, am I onto something here? Because you can even put them side by side and they even kind of resemble each other. You are the father! <laughs> So what do you think? Could Brock be the unofficial last Salamanca? Because hey, Andrea never said who the father is and with this background story that I put together, I think we can see how I came to this conclusion. But that's just me. But now I wanna hear from you guys. Who do you think Brock's father is? Do you think the creator Vince Gilligan would agree to this video? And what do you think the Salamancas would have done if they found out about it? Whatever it is, let me know down below in the comments and I'll do my best to respond. And don't forget to like and subscribe this video if you enjoyed this video. But until next time, my name is Merge, later.